In today's lesson, we're going to discuss reading tablature, and then we're going to talk about the root notes of chords, and finally we're going to go over a brand new chord and use it in a Credence Clearwater Revival style chord progression. Tablature, or tab for short, is a six-line staff that graphically represents the strings of the guitar. So each line represents one of the strings, and numbers placed on the lines will tell you which fret to push down on that particular string. Unlike chord charts, tablature does not indicate which fingers to use. And I should note that you should read from left to right when reading tablature. Okay, so here's a single note exercise using tablature. So we're going to start on the open first string. And then we're going to go to the first fret on the second string. And then we're going to go to the third fret on the second string. And then the open third string. I do want to mention that though the music notes are included on the staff above the tablature, you don't need to worry about them for now. Okay, so let's talk about root notes, which are also called primary bass notes. The root of any chord is the same as its name. So for example, with the D chord, the open fourth string, or the D string, is the root for the D chord. With the A7 chord, the root note is the A, or the open fifth string. And finally, with the G chord, your second finger is pushing down a G, which is the root note for that chord. With this newfound knowledge, it's time to forge ahead and work on a great exercise that uses the bass notes and chord strums. Okay, so we're going to start with the open fourth string, which is the D. That's the bass note for the D chord. So we're going to play the D, and then we're going to strum the third, second, and first strings, and then we're going to play the next measure. Now we're going to go to the A7 chord, play the open 5th string, and strum the 4th, 3rd, 2nd, and 1st strings. Now we're going to go to the 3rd fret on the 6th string, and we're only going to strum from the 4th string down. Now we're going to go to the 5th string, and then back to 4th string. Okay, so the next exercise, we're going to be working with a new chord. Now the new chord is the A chord. So what we could do is take the A sus2 that we learned in lesson two, not play the sixth string, start on the fifth string. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add the third finger right behind that second finger. And it's going to be on the second fret of the second string. So you're going to squeeze all three fingers in between uh, the second fret on the fourth, the third, and the second strings. And we're just going to strum from the fifth string down. Okay, so you're going to do a strum, pick, strum. So we have a strum, and then a pick, and then a strum. Okay, now we're going to use that chord in uh, an exercise. Okay, so we're going to start with the D chord, and we're going to strum that four times. Now we're going to go to the G chord, we're going to strum that four times, and then we're going to go to the A chord, strum that four times, and the D chord four times. Alright, we'll do it one more time, just a little bit slower. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, move to the G chord. One, two, three, four. Go to the A chord. One, two, three, four. Back to the D chord. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now let's take the root notes we were talking about before and use them with the chord progression featuring eighth notes. So in this next exercise, we're going to start with the open fourth string, which is the root note for the D chord. And then we're going to strum down, up, down, up, down. And we're going to do the same thing on the G chord. Play the root note. Same strum pattern. And then the A chord, root note, fifth string open. And then we're going to do the down, up, down, up, down. And then the root note for the D chord. Down, up, down, up, down. And repeat. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and 
four, one, two, and three, and four. All right, so we'll play that one more time. I'm gonna give a count off before we begin. We're gonna start very slowly and follow along as we play. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. And then one, two, and three, and four. And again, one, two, and three, and four to the G chord. One, two, and three, and four, and the A. One, two, and three, and four. Back to the D. One, two, and three, and four. And I do want to point out that when you do the upstrokes on any of the chords, make sure you only hit the first and second string for the D chord, and the first, second, and third strings for the G chord and the A chord. Okay, so in this final chord progression, we're going to be utilizing the root notes we talked about, and we're going to be using them with the D chord, the A chord, and the G chord. Okay, so here's the final chord progression. Okay, so we're going to go over it very slowly, and let me give a count off. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, so work on all the chord progressions we went over. Make sure you understand how to read tablature and that you understand the root notes. And go over the brand new chord, the A chord. And you can always practice going from the A sus2 to the A chord, making sure you do a strum and then a pick and a strum. And then also work on that final chord progression, the bad moon rising chord progression. So, all right, work on all of that. Have fun, and I will see you next time.